Welcome back to PyWatch YouTube. And today we'll do a quick video about project setup in Python. It was a question like, how do I, do I use poetry or do I go from scratch? When does Git comes in, GitHub? So I will um, show a few tactics and what I commonly do. I keep it actually pretty simple. So hopefully this will be a quick video. Let's uh, dive straight in. All right. So a while ago, I used Poetry. I still really like the tool, but I honestly have not used it lately. But I do want to show it as a way of uh, getting the full bells and whistles. So you can make a new project like this, and then uh, it will create the test project package in a test project folder, right? So if I CD into it and I do a tree, uh, it comes now with a test directory a package directory and already the TUML file, right? So the TUML file becomes more important when you package your code up. So it comes with some nice defaults. It manages to grab my email, uh, makes assumption about Python. And when I add a dependency, it will keep updating that TUML file. And actually already running in some issues, which I think as I have not used it a while, I need to set the um, Python inf um, the Python version. Use, I guess. All right, and it also you see fanf in my prompt, which is probably a leftover from the previous thing I was doing. Um, so this should now be, uh, this should work now. And we added this dependency. I will stop there. There's another video I did a long time ago about poetry. It's not how I work these days. So I'm just going to go with my approach. And it's, uh, again, pretty uh, bare bones. So what I would do is make a new project. I CD into the folder. And almost straight away, I make a virtual environment. I have my alias, but I will just uh, type it out for now. That makes a fan folder. I will do a video at some point to actually explain what that does. So it's kind of interesting. And I now have 3.11 and I don't have any dependencies, right? Um, then I do some work, right? So you, and that's where kind of where uh, the next thing comes in, like um, what am I building, right? Is it like a quick, quick script? Is it a package? And there are a couple of variants I use. So if it's just like a script or a quick tool, I'm not even bothering with making a package structure. So here in the video uh, I did yesterday about the Mastodon uh, backup, it's just a couple of files here in the repo, and I don't really care putting that in a folder structure. But if I'm distributing the code uh, like a search tool, then I'm definitely going to make a package or even like a source layout, a test uh, folder and uh a pyproject.tumble file. Previously set up that pie, but I switched to the new format, which is uh, the tumble file. And there you have uh, a build system and metadata. So I can actually make a distribution from that. And I covered that in the uh, packaging video and podcast I will link below. And if you use Django, for example, um, that already comes with a pre existing. A structure for a project and apps. So here you have a books app uh, and it already comes with views, models, um, admin. And yeah, you probably will be making a templates folder. You will be making a URLs file. If you use salary, you make a tasks file. And sometimes you need some extra code. Uh, and then I will just add modules like this uh, in the same app folder. But that's Django, right? But that's kind of how I structure things. I think the main thing is um, if I'm going to package it, I set up that pro proper structure, which um, as you saw with the poetry new command, it's also endorsing. Uh, although here it uses the source layout. And if it's just um, a quick project, I don't have packaging in mind, then I just do a bunch of files in the root folder. 
Now for requirements, uh, you can use, um, so say I would um, install requests. At some point I would do just manually pinning them. So I would make a requirements text and then uh, pin them like this. But yeah, pinning also kind of depends if you want to really pinpoint the library over time. I could also leave the pinning off. It kind of depends again, what kind of project this is. Um, if it's code in production or for a package, pinning might actually be very important. But another way uh, of doing this is to use pip tools. So pip install pip tools. User requirements .in file just list the require um, the requirements. So let's say we have two requests and BS four a beautiful beautiful soup, and now I can use which it's not yet in my path. So let me um, after doing that pip install of the pip tools. Let's activate my virtual environment again. So it's now in the actual local path. And I can do pip compile. It should find the requirements.txt file. And it should have created a requirements text file with um, quite some detail. So not only lists the dependencies, but also where they came from, right? So certify came from requests. So you see like these fourth party. So you have third party. But then you'll also have fourth party or requirements of the requirements. And it's kind of nice how this tool uh, gives you that extra detail in the commands, right? Um, and then over time, you can use um, pip compile, I guess, upgrade to keep them, to keep your dependencies up to date. Yeah, that, that wouldn't have caused any changes right now. So that, um, of course, then I do a git status and say, hey, this is actually not a git repo. So there are two options here. I can locally init um, an empty repo, or I can do it on GitHub. Uh, well, you will always actually do it on GitHub because you need a way to store this. Um, so what could be an advantage to actually start your project here? Because then you can also kind of include a readme and you can include a git ignore file from the start, right? So you kind of need to do this step uh, anyway to at least have a backup. Of course, sometimes it's private code, sometimes it's public. Uh, let's just go with public. And now I have a bunch of code here and I have a bunch of code here, right? So the first step is to uh, handle this locally. So Actually, I could already pull in the repo. So I go to code and I can get the HTTPS clone or the SSH. I always use SSH. Of course, that does require that you have an SSH key set up. Uh, maybe I should do a video about that as well. Um, but what I usually do end up doing is git remote at origin and then the SSH URL. And then I'm going to pull from origin main, which is the default branch. And now these two are synced up. So you see the readme coming in. What I don't see is the get ignore file because I need to do ls minus la to also show hidden files. And as I showed previously, I had an alias as well to pull in the get ignore file. But if you make your repo here, you don't even have to use that step. It already comes with a Python compatible get ignore file and that should list the vamp. So when I now do a git status, it's not showing vamp because that's now get ignored, right? Um, yeah, so I could make another commit, uh, git add requirements. Git commit edit requirements. And now I can push back to the remote, right? So as you saw before, we did the git remote at origin, and that's now listed as a remote. So I can push back to GitHub, git push origin main. 
And lastly, at this point, I can just do a bunch of things on main. Um, sometimes that happen happens, I'm just experimenting. But it's very low cost to, at this point, already make a branch, right? So you can either say just, um, so you can make the branch and then check it out, or you can do both steps in one. So you can do git checkout minus B that will make the branch and also put you on the branch. And you can, I just call it in it, but of course, if you have a specific feature in mind then just name it better, you can do a bunch of work. So this is just, um, That's not really about the code in this video. Um, but what I really want to highlight is, um, well, two things, right? So I'm about to push this to GitHub in a separate branch, which will uh, allow me to make a pull request, which is always better, right? For documentation, tracking. But lately, um, what I started to do is issue everything. So I can make an issue. And again, it's not about what we're coding, it's more about the meta process. And now I know at this point, I had a specific need on this repo, right? Uh, that was also why in a previous video, I made that open repo alias, because I want to go to from Git remotes to repos uh, in, the, in, the, in the browser very quickly because I'm issuing everything, right? It's great documentation. If this is something complex, I can brainstorm, I can talk with other contributors. Um, we can actually flash out the feature first. Um, but what's also cool um, now with a pull request, I can mention this issue. So say this was the fix, right? I can now say git commit fixes issue URL. Uh, and that's all local, right? But now I can push up the branch Git conveniently um, the text that I pushed the new branch. So it gives me the URL to make a pull request. So I can do that um, just against main. Um, so code reviews can happen. But even if I don't, right, if, if I just merge it in, I have a very nice documentation going on because at this moment in time, I know this code was written. We always have that track record, right? Now, when I merge it in, look what happened to the issue. The issue is now also automatic, automatically closed because I mentioned it in the commit message. And GitHub is smart enough to then detect, oh, this is fixed. Uh, I can auto close it. And you also have a reference to the uh, pull request. This it doesn't have to be a pull request. You can also use an individual commit. As long as you give an indication that it fixes some sort of issue, it will auto close it and it will reference it. So this is a really great workflow uh, and it just enhances the, um, the documentation of your project. So I think that's it for starters. Uh, I did a quick poetry setup thing, um, but I'm not using poetry right now. So I didn't spend too much time on that. I showed my workflow of using virtual environment with event built in, uh, requirements with pip tools, um, opening a GitHub repo, using issues and branches, and I think that will do for setting up a project. Oh, yeah, and I also showed you when I do the full packaging thing with Tumble file, PyProject Tumble file, and the direct directories versus just a bunch of files. And even what I do with, with Django if I have additional modules. So I hope this helps, especially the beginner Pythonistas out there get started. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you want, to see more of this kind of setup, beginner tools kind of videos, let me know as well. All right, thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow.